Um, so hi everyone, um, my name is Karin, I'm from BGU International, and today this is a live session about our MBA International program. Um, we are recording this session and we will share it online later. So if you prefer to close your camera, uh, you are welcome to do so. Um, I will tell you a little bit about the university in general, academics, student life and services. Uh, Maya, the MBA International Program Coordinator, will present the faculty, um, and of course, we'll share all the information about the program. We also have a student and an alum uh, that will share their experience with you. And then uh, by the end, if you have um, some question, we'll have time to answer. Um, if you have question during the um, session, you can write it in the chat and we will address them uh, once we finish the presentation. We also have with us Dr. Stavi Bawa, who is the director of BGU International. Okay, so our slogan is inspiration meets excellence. We are a multidisciplinary research university that practice the vision in teaching, research and community engagement. Um, we are named um, after David Ben-Gurion, the first prime minister, prime minister of Israel, who envisioned a world-class institution that will transform the Negev region. Why the Negev region? Because the Negev region um, constitutes 60% of Israel area, um, yet it currently houses only 11% of its population. So um, 50 years later, the university has three campuses. As you can see in the map, Be'er Sheva is in the middle of the map and at the tip of the Negev Desert. Um, Be'er Sheva is the biggest city in this region. It serves uh, as a metropolis. Uh, offering services to all neighboring town and cities. We also have a campus in Sdebukel, which is about 40 minutes south of Be'er Sheva, um, and a smaller campus in Eilat, which is the southest city in Israel. Um, let's move on. So Biji is at the heart of a, a powerful ecosystem. Maya will talk a lot about this ecosystem. Um, just to, so you see, it comprises of the main campus, the hospital, which is a university hospital, and the advanced technology park um, that was founded in collaboration between the university, the municipality, the industry, and the government. Um, we are uh, very proud to say that we were part of the establishment of this ATP, um, and we are proud that so many companies, multinational companies, startup companies, um, found their place in the ATP because one of the university goals when establishing this park was to create a high quality opportunities for our students and graduates. Um, and Maya will discuss it a little bit, um, how it um, meets the MBA program. So a little bit about um, BGU. BGU um, is a home to 20,000 students. Um, we have students from over 75 countries. A third of the student body is in advanced uh, degree uh, programs, and it was founded 50 years ago, 51 years ago already. Um, we have, of course, a lot of alumni that makes a great impact, both Israelis and international. Uh, these are just some examples of, of um, alumni that we are proud of. Um, one specific case that I can mention is uh, Dr. Tal Zaks, which is the chief medical officer of Moderna, which is now one of the leading companies that um, worked on the vaccines for COVID. Um, so um, one of the main values of the university is diversity, both within the local body um, community and the international. So we have over a thousand students from over 75 countries. Um, and also the, the BGU local community is very diverse. We have students from all over the country, from um, a lot of religions, um, very, very diverse. So in regarding to academics, we are a comprehensive university. We have six faculties. Uh, we have humanities and social, social sciences. We have natural sciences engineering sciences, faculty of health sciences. We have the businesses management faculty, which Maya will explain and, and describe. And we have the Blaustein um, Research Institute for Desert Research. Um, student life. 
so in general, Israel is a very safe place. Um, but in BGU, the campuses, all the adjoining facilities like the dorms and the sports complex are secured. There's a security hotline that can be reached 24 seven. There's a special app for BGU student and staff with a, with a security button that if you press it in a minute, someone will call you and ask if everything is okay. Um, we are very much connected to all the national security um, municipalities. So everything is always, we are always well informed and we always inform the students in time. BGU International um, is held, is holding general orientation for all students. Um, and part of it is of course, uh, security guidelines. So you will know exactly how to react to everything. Uh, in regarding to transportation, all the campuses are very well accessible. The main campus in Beersheba, which is where the MBA program is situated, is very, very well connected. There's five minutes walk to the train station. Um, you can walk actually from place to place very, very easily. Um, but of course you can use buses, taxis, bike. Um, Maya can tell how easy it is for students to go from the ATP to the um, campus and from, ev from everywhere you walk, it's, it's like a five minute walk. So this is the um, campus map. Um, as you can see, this is the bus station, the train station, sorry. Um, this is where our offices are. Um, and this is the uh, BGU International dorms is located. So everything is really within um, a walking distance. Um, by the way, the management faculty is here. So also very, very close. Um, the housing options, there's um, two very big um, dorm complex right outside the campus. BG International dorms are located um, on the left side, as you can see. It's a four single bedrooms in a shared apartment. Israeli students are uh, living there as dorms ambassadors. And there's of course a lot of opportunity available um, to rent just an apartment. It's very, very um, accessible. Uh, we help with everything that has to do with visa and health insurance. There's an office within BGU International that uh, accompanies you across all procedures, especially now with COVID, um, when things are a little bit more complicated and everybody needs entry permits and specific uh, permits. Um, so we just accompany everyone from day one until you're here um, telling you about all the things you need to do throughout that uh, process. Hopefully by the time the, the years begins, it will be much, much easier. But for now, we're taking care of it. And Maya will explain a little bit about how the COVID um, influenced the program and the faculty. A little bit about the city and the region. So Be'er Sheva is a metropolis. Um, it's an old city with a lot of um, amazing history. Very, very active one. There's festivals and events. Um, it's culturally diverse. We are on the tip of a desert, so it's very easy to get to the desert. And if you go to the Care campus, you are just in the desert. Um, near the university, there's Ringenblum Street, with, which is a very um, student oriented street. There's a lot of restaurants and pubs, and it's just around the corner. Um, Food is a very big issue in Israel in general, but also in, in Be'er Sheva, because it's so diverse, there's just anything that you can imagine, you can find in Be'er Sheva. The university is very known for its lively campus life. Um, students create and shape an urban culture in Be'er Sheva. Um, they are very socially involved and active in the community, both local and international students. Um, we as BGU International organize a lot of events and activities, orientation and city tours, trips to get to know Israel, holidays together, now with COVID virtual events, um, an activity of spoken Hebrew just to get a little bit of Hebrew, you know, to help you get your coffee just right or to talk to the bus driver. Um, the student union at BGU is one of the biggest and most active in Israel. Um, they also have an international coordinator who works with the international students and help them with whatever they need. The cost of living in Be'er Sheva is considered to be uh, relatively cheap in Israel. Um, these are just some examples of a monthly cost of living, but of course it depends 
on your needs and your affordability. Um, that is all from me. Um, you can always reach us um, in our website, social media. We have an email study at BGU that you can reach. And um, I'm giving the floor to Maya. Thank you. Okay, so I will share my screen. So hi, good evening to everybody. My name is Maya Rubenstein and I am the coordinator of the MBA International Program at the Guilford Glazer Faculty of Business and Management at Ben Gurion University of the Negev in Israel, um, as you've heard quite a bit about already at this point uh, from Kareen. So I'd like to welcome you to our very first information session for the October 2021 intake. Uh, so it's very exciting uh, to kick off our our, our recruitment for the, for the coming uh, cohort. Uh, over the next uh, 20 minutes or so, I'll just share with you about the program, um, followed by a few words from one of our current international students and also one of our Israeli graduates. And finally, we'll uh, open the floor to um, any questions, I guess, through the chat. Um, and, uh, you know, we'll be happy to, to answer anything. Um, so, um, as you heard already, uh, Ben Gurion University of Negev is uh, located in the city of Beersheba in southern Israel. Beersheba is uh, as the capital of, Israel, of capital of the Negev, which is a region that has blossomed into really what we like to call the epitome of the startup nation. Um, and and Beersheba sits at the epicenter of this ecosystem. So as the city continues to develop, you saw the map uh, of the development of uh, what's called an innovation district, uh, which, uh, as Karin explained, includes Ben Gurion University, the adjacent Soroka Medical Center. Um, the future high-tech park, uh, um, R&D facility of the Israeli Defense Forces, and the Gaviam uh, Advanced Technologies Park, the ATP, uh, as it's called, um, which really focuses on high-tech and biotech, um, and was obviously, you know, an initiative established in partnership with Ben Gurion University. Um, so it's really a thriving technology ecosystem, um, and it's uh, a hub of interdisciplinary research, collaboration, exchanging ideas, and I like to call it a hotbed for creativity, innovation, and social enterprise, um, and really kind of what ties uh, the tying themes um, of, of Be'er Sheva and the region and Ben Gurion University. Um, so Ben Gurion University um, is an integral link in this ecosystem. And as Karin described it, there are three uh, campuses, there are 60 interdisciplinary research centers, 20,000 students, over 135,000 alumni. So it's a very strong um, and established network. Um, and as this university has really refined the art of cross-disciplinary collab collaboration uh, and innovation. And, and at this, by the same token, maintaining a strong commitment to civic engagement uh, and social and environmental responsibility. And um, within this network of, uh, within this ecosystem, um, Ben Gurion has um, a lot of key players in innovation and entrepreneurship. Um, so one of those key players is BGN Technologies. Uh, which sits in the high-tech park, and it's the technology company uh, of Ben Gurion University, um, which we have had uh, some collaboration with in the past as a program. Um, and BGN basically brings technological innovation from lab to market and fosters entrepreneurship among researchers and students. Um, a, a relatively newly established Yazamut 360 is the University Innovation Center. Um, Yazamut is the Hebrew word for entrepreneurship, and, and that's really the center's main mission to train students, researchers, staff um, for a really rapidly changing world and equip them with a new toolbox of skills that will enhance their competitive positioning and start in the market. So uh, the center really supports uh, not just researchers, but students um, and one, uh, one such community that uh, gets a lot of support from the center is Tech Sheva, which is a nonprofit entrepreneurship and technology community. Um, for startups in the Negev, and that is also based uh, in the Gaviam uh, High Tech Park. Uh, another key player in this entrepreneurship, in this uh, uh, ecosystem, is uh, the Benji Center for Entrepreneurship and Innovation. Um, this is actually, uh, the, the Benji Center is located directly in the Guilford Glazer Faculty of Business and Management. Uh, it's a center that was established in 2001 um, with really the goal of promoting uh, entrepreneurship and innovation in academia and beyond. Um, and today the center supports, um, you know, the ever-growing demand to learn about the main issues faced today in the fields of entrepreneurship and innovation, high-tech management, and it hosts a lot of entrepreneurial competitions and challenges, um, some of which really our students uh, participate in directly. Um, there are student communities, mentorship, consulting, uh, and of course the impact 
startup internship, which I'll, I'll go into uh, much more detail uh, shortly. Um, and then, of course, um, you know, one of the key players in this in the ecosystem of, of VGU is the faculty, the Guilford Glazer Faculty of Business and Management, um, which is home to the MBA International Program. So the MBA International Program um, is uh, the only Equius accredited business school uh, in Israel. Equius, uh, the Equius accreditation, uh, the, the uh, business, I'm sorry, the Guilford Glazer Faculty of Business Management, which is, it, it's located, as Karim mentioned, in, uh, on the main campus, um, uh, kind of in a central location to the city itself. Um, and the Equius accreditation uh, is uh, one of the most comprehensive international accreditation systems uh, for business and management schools uh, based out of Europe. And it's acknowledged worldwide by potential students, faculty, employers, corporate clients, and the media. Um, so uh, we're really proud to uh, have earned this, uh, this title. Um, uh, and the vision of the Faculty of Business and Management is uh, that management leads society. Uh, it's a vision that's aligned with uh, the mission of Ben Gurion University. Um, the vision of the Faculty of Business Management is to cultivate researchers and graduates who are major agents of change in management and society. Um, and this vision is really fueled by the, by the mission of the faculty, which is to nurture creative, inspiring business leaders and visionaries who change people's lives, lead our society, and ask why before they move forward. We do this through our groundbreaking research and innovative curricula that both challenge traditional management approaches and instill innovative ideas that empower our graduates to transform organizations and society as a whole. This mission really realizes itself in a lot of the new activity that's taking place in the Faculty of Business and Management, uh, a lot of the new programs and courses uh, that are um, slowly being integrated into all of the programs that are um, uh, and degree programs in the faculty. Uh, the faculty itself hosts a wide array of really innovative degree programs, including four BAs, three master's programs, uh, four MBAs, and a PhD track. And of course, one of those uh, MBA programs is the MBA International Program. Um, uh, so, you know, the MBA, when you're looking to do an MBA, uh, whether you're considering, you know, a career change or a move into management, uh, ultimately today's complex world really calls for managers who think critically and strategically, but also ethically um, and in a very forward thinking way. Um, and the MBA International Program, um, is a one, unique one-year MBA experience in the heart of this, the negative technology ecosystem that really comes to answer the call um, for an affordable MBA program in English. Um, the program brings together international and Israeli students and offers an integrative business and management program that really draws on these missions of the university and the Guilford Glazer Faculty of Business and Management by highlighting innovation, entrepreneurship, and social enterprise. Um, bridging the divide between industry and academia, the program comprises core, mod core business modules and advanced courses, and intensive workshops, uh, an integrative uh, internship experience, real world application simulations, and professional development uh, field trips. So during your year of studies, um, some of the things you can come to expect are that you'll learn the fundamentals of business strategy, uh, along with process-oriented frameworks, best practices that will enable you to put theory into practice, um, you will, uh, one of the key, uh, one of the keys of, a, of an MBA, you know, you're going to expand your professional network by studying with a very intimate but very diverse cohort of, of students. Uh, our students hail from, um, from, you know, all the, you know, all six continents and um, are culturally, linguistically, um, uh, professionally, academically diverse. Um, ages of our students range from their mid 20s to their mid 50s um, from academic backgrounds and academic professional backgrounds ranging from education uh, to engineering from um, from economics to medicine uh, social workers to uh, you know linguists and everything in between um, even in such a, a small and intimate cohort um, and ultimately you're also going to explore the startup nation because that is what Israel ultimately is, with a very unique internship opportunity uh, with local startups and a very, uh, making a very meaningful impact. Um, and again, we'll really discuss the internship opportunity in, in more depth um, in a few moments. Ultimately, what you're going to get out of the program is that you're going to establish for yourself a solid foundation in the core business disciplines 
you're going to broaden your theoretical knowledge, but also gain practical skills along the way, as long as hands along, um, along with hands-on experience, and then expand your international network. So we're ready to, to uh, take the leap into the nitty-gritty of the program. Um, uh, the nitty-gritty details uh, regarding admissions, uh, but also costs and scholarship, um, details about our schedule uh, and curriculum, the internship program, uh, a little bit about the opportunities, collaboration, and networking, and, and again, also uh, COVID-19 is a part of our lives, so uh, just touching on that as well and how that's uh, impacted our program. So um, to begin with, the cost of, regarding costs and scholarships about the program, uh, as I mentioned, the, the MBA International Program um, is an, a very affordable MBA in English. Um, uh, tuition in Israel is uh, regulated by the Israeli Council for Higher Education, and as such, uh, this program uh, adheres to those uh, to that to those tuition uh, guidelines. Uh, so the entire program costs about ten thousand um, dollars, obviously depending on the exchange rate, uh, but for uh, for the entire program, not per semester, but for the entire program. Um, uh, so, uh, uh, you know, we want that to be an accessible degree uh, to all students who are interested in engaging in an international cohort um, um, in English. Uh, the program itself doesn't offer scholarships, um, but we do know that scholarships are available through, uh, may be available through your country's embassies. Uh, the Ministry of Absorption, uh, you know, offers scholarships uh, or fun funding for new immigrants. Um, if they qualify, and there may be other sources as well. Um, and uh, American applicants uh, or U.S. applicants um, could be eligible to apply for a Fulbright Israel scholarship. Uh, I think there are about seven of those uh, granted per year for the master's programs. Um, uh, but you know, you can apply for those as uh, for that scholarship uh, when applying to the MBA International program. Um, the curriculum is an integrated. Um, integrative fixed MBA curriculum. Um, that means that there are no, uh, there's no specializations, there's no electives, there's no thesis, uh, and it's a fixed curriculum. So there are actually no, so as I said, there are no electives. Uh, languages of instruction is all in English from start to finish, um, uh, and the degree that you're ultimately on your diploma, you receive an MBA. Um, as I mentioned, the program highlights innovation and in entrepreneurship and social enterprise. You'll see that in some of the courses in the next slide. Um, and it's really woven into the classroom, and into, into the curriculum and the program experience inside and outside the classroom. Um, the program runs over the course of uh, one, can, one full year, uh, works out to about 12 to 13 months, uh, depending on, on how uh, the Jewish holidays uh, fall out, uh, according to the lunar calendar. Um, and it's spread out over three consecutive semesters. So a fall semester, a spring semester, and a summer semester. So you're studying from about October to October. Um, classes are held on Thursdays and Fridays, where Thursdays um, are from 2 o'clock in the afternoon until 8 o'clock, and Fridays are from 8 o'clock until 2 o'clock. Students who are required to take prerequis the prerequisite courses, who don't, students who don't qualify for exemptions, uh, from these courses, we'll be taking them on Thursdays earlier in the day, starting at 11 o'clock, and as an intensive course prior to the start of, of the program uh, in early October. Uh, in addition to our Thursday and Friday classes, there are week-long intensive workshops. Uh, these workshops uh, are held over the course of a single week um, for five or six consecutive days. Um, and so this is, as far as the scheduling, kind of how the program breaks down. The curriculum uh, is divided into, I would say four or five categories, depending on how we lump them together. Um, you have the preparatory courses. Uh, these are the prerequisite courses that I uh, just mentioned, uh, which is mathematics, fundamentals of management economics, and statistics and management. Uh, students may qualify for exemptions from these courses um, uh, um, based on their previous academic, uh, uh, based on their, on their undergraduate or, or graduate degrees. Um, and, uh, and if you're required to take these courses, economics is held prior to the start of the first semester, uh, and mathematics and statistics are each held uh, in the 11 o'clock to 2 o'clock slot um, on Thursdays during the first and second semester. Um, the second category uh, is our core courses. Our core courses really are the courses that bring all of our students to a level playing field, while um, 
with with more of a with a little bit more of an international approach to them. So uh, we're looking at accounting, marketing, finance, operations management, uh, behavioral science, as well as a course in strategy and policy in business. Um, and then uh, the next category that we have is our advanced courses. The advanced courses um, are rotating courses that vary uh, from year to year, but really allow our students to delve into um, many of the topics. Um, whether it's uh, on the on the uh, quantitative level or on the personal development level, um, on a much on a much deeper level. So uh, we have courses in financial report analysis, um, talent and management and career management, uh, which which is a very personal development course, uh, high tech management, a uh, course in uh, innovation and entrepreneurship, um, and another course in organizational sustainability. This is a sort of a, a tasting of some of the courses that we've offered. Uh, in the past, uh, we the, again, as I mentioned, these uh, may vary from year to year. Uh, and uh, um, uh, the the final category that we have is our workshops. As I mentioned, they're intensive courses um, that are held over the course of several consecutive days. Um, the workshops are uh, run by professors who come in, especially from abroad. Um, the goal of the workshops is to really expose our students to topics on a very intensive level. Um, by but also uh, it, with professors who come in and 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 come in with a perspective from uh, from outside of Israel. So uh, we have a professor who comes in from the University of Toronto who teaches a course on marketing simulation, uh, which is an intensive competition um, as opposed to just a regular course with a you know a paper at the end. Um, we have another course on uh, we had a course on international negotiations, uh, which was a professor from Norway. Um, we have another course on inter uh, organizational sustainability, which is a professor who comes in from Trent. Um, so these courses really allow us to expose our students to um, various topics on a really intensive level. Um, and in general, many of the professors and faculty in our program um, are either, um, they're, not everybody is a research faculty here in the Faculty of Business and Management. We have a lot of adjunct faculty who are, um, have one foot in academia and one foot in industry. Um, and uh, really our goal is to be able to provide our students that access uh, and bridge uh, between academia and industry. And, and we're able to do that really by bringing in professors who, um, who are involved in the field. Um, uh, I'll, I'll sort of move on now to the Impact uh, Startup Internship. Uh, this is a program that uh, we've had, um, it's really been a highly successful program and, and we're moving into already our our third uh, cohort of uh, participants. Um, the idea behind the Impact Startup Internship is to pair our students with startups uh, for a full semester. Uh, the goal is to apply your skills in the real world, and that's what you do in the Impact Startup Internship. Uh, you really get your hands dirty uh, by working together with, uh, with founders of startups um, here in Beersheba uh, or in the Negev region. Um, and the program itself is facilitated by the Veggie Center for Entrepreneurship and Innovation. Um, ultimately, when you work together with a startup, you're working hand in hand to provide um, uh, your match with it. Over the course of the uh, over the course of the internship, um, what you have the opportunity to do is really uh, enrich your academic experience. You're gaining valuable real world professional experience. Uh, you're not just pushing paper. Uh, and making coffee, you're providing real value to a small innovative organization that could be precede. Uh, they uh, are really like at a very, very uh, critical stage um, in their uh, um, in the startup. Um, and so you really get to explore the startup nation by working in a true startup environment, because that so that could mean uh, working in an office or working entirely virtually because the startup environment. Envir <laughs> many of these startups don't are working out of their labs. Uh, it could be researchers here in the university. It could be a startup that's based in the high tech park. Um, so uh, you know, it could be. It's a really uh, unique experience. Uh, and ultimately, what you're doing is you're really expanding your network um, and you're forging a professional uh, and social connection in the Israeli market. Um, the way the program works is that you start in the first semester uh, with a four-part introductory workshop uh, run by the Veggie Center. Uh, the goal of this workshop is to really. Uh, uh, engage students in or introduce students to uh, how a startup works, um, kind of the terminology of a startup, how to do market research, um, and to give you some tools uh, that could be useful for working specifically with startups. 
Um, and then uh, there's the matching phase. Uh, and the goal of the matching phase is to allow uh, the startup uh, to seek out students that really, or to seek you out, look for students that have the skills that they need. Uh, and by the same token, uh, to allow our students to seek out startups that are really interesting to them. Um, and uh, I can't say that we've ever not made a match. So, you know, there's always a match made. Um, sometimes it takes more time, sometimes it takes less, but um, uh, it's just about being very determined to find, find the right match for you. And then uh, during the second semester, uh, our students really start to engage in the experience uh, where uh, you invest about five to 10 hours a week, more if, if, you, if you so desire, um, and start providing uh, results for the startup. Uh, what that means is that you could be conducting market research or uh, you know, competitive analysis, um, breaking into new markets uh, for startups. It really depends on what the startup is looking for and what are the skills that you can provide. Um, as a student entering into an internship experience in a very uh, small, uh, in a very short program, um, what you have is the first semester as uh, the academic foundation for your startup experience, for your internship experience, uh, and then throughout the internship, uh, the mentorship uh, and professional support from the Benji Center um, with regular check-ins. Um, our students from this year have really just kicked off with their uh, internship as they just entered into the second semester. Um, and so you, you may hear from that. I'm not sure um, uh, if we have enough, <laughs> if they've spent enough time working uh, to really have uh, um, be able to share their experiences. Uh, but if this is something that's interesting, uh, we'd love to connect you also with uh, students who've been, uh, who, have, uh, uh, who have gone through the whole process. Some of our alumni who've really, uh, who've really enjoyed the whole experience and given us really good feedback on, on the experience. Uh, and how really mutually beneficial it was. We've had students who've engaged to such an extent that they've really become almost a part of the organization, uh, participating in, uh, in trade shows and, uh, you know, uh, where, where it was really a valuable experience for both the, the startup and the students. Um, so kind of part of that, um, uh, I think it's this, uh, the internship, uh, portion really segues into the the opportunities and the networking uh, that is really part and parcel to an MBA experience. Um, I might skip forward a second first. Uh, hold on, I'm sorry. No, we're going to stay here. So, um, so the first uh, so part of the program is really to expose you to a wider network to engage your students uh, in the local community. Uh, on the social enterprise level, but also obviously um, on the startup level and on the innovation and entrepreneurship. Um, on regular non-COVID years, we've had our trips, which were um, uh, eagerly waiting to, to reinstate. Um, the first trip that we usually uh, engage our students in is the urban renewal and social enterprise, uh, what we call it in a dusty desert town, that is Beersheba. It's exploring Beersheba um, from the perspective of social enterprise, exploring the Dalid neighborhood, which is um, really the most depressed neighborhood in Beersheba, and um, how social enterprise has really fueled the urban renewal here in Beersheba. Um, and uh, as we explore the old city, the experience is quite enjoyable for our students as we uh, engage not only in the local uh, businesses and, and learn about them and, and, and visit them, also get to enjoy a little bit of great food and um, a lecture that's really relevant, uh, which has varied from year to year, but uh, to give the students a little bit more perspective on, um, on, on the, the renewal in Beersheba. Um, another trip that we've offered to our students is Intel, a global and local tango, uh, where we visit the Intel fab in Kiryat Gat, uh, explore it from the perspective of uh, the interaction between uh, a global organization, organization um, a global organization's influence on its locale and the local influences on a global organization. Um, our last trip to Intel also included uh, a lecture from the global tax director, which was a really interesting way of bridging uh, uh, bridging uh, or in incorporating sort of like the quantitative uh, aspects of the organization um, and, and finance became a really a really strong topic um, in that trip. Finally, we have this course on organizational sustainability, uh, which is uh, run by Professor Asaf Zohar, who comes in from Trent University. And, and this course really incorporates a lot of field work, um, exploring sustainable development and, so, and the social change here in Beersheba in the Negev. Um, visiting um, 
factories and, and local enterprises. Um, so it's a really interesting opportunity to really explore the network uh, and, and engage in the local, in the local community. Um, in addition, we also have opportunities for our students to uh, engage in international collaborations uh, and other sort of exchange opportunities. Uh, the university I haven't actually mentioned, but the university does have uh, exchange program uh, that's a that's a that's a possibility to explore for students who are interested um, on an individual basis. Um, another program that's uh, that's uh, offered is the uh, University of California San Diego Ready School Management. Uh, U.S. Israel Center on Innovation and Economic Sustainability. Um, they have a selective, a very selective U.S. immersion program uh, where students um, are really handpicked from the faculty uh, to participate in um, in an, a U.S. immersion program where they uh, are divided into groups with students from uh, the Rady School of Management. Uh, it's an exchange program abroad, so students uh, actually fly out to San Diego for a week um, and. Um, uh, work together in groups with students from there to uh, solve a startup dilemma of uh, uh, penetration of an Israeli startup in, uh, in the San Diego ecosystem. Um, so it is a selective uh, program, but we've had several of our students who've actually been selected and sent off uh, to San Diego, which is, was very, very exciting for us uh, as a program. Um, another opportunity that our students have engaged in in the past is the Intel, I, Intel AI Everywhere Challenge. Um, which was uh, held in collaboration with a group of students who came to visit from Penn State. Uh, one of the advantages of having the uh, Benji Center, a, really an integral part of the Guilford Glazer Faculty of Business Management, is that it allows, um, it gives us a lot of access to uh, collaborations and, and, and different opportunities with visiting, um, with visiting universities. And so this was one such opportunity where our students were once again divided into groups together with, uh, with the Penn State students, uh, participated in a competition where they had to develop an, a, uh, an AI solution, uh, like a technology solution that ultimately was uh, judged by Intel, uh, a panel of Intel judges. And, and once again, one of our uh, groups um, really went on to the finals and took third place. Um, so that again was also very exciting for us. And finally, uh, we do have, we're exploring another uh, collaboration opportunity with uh, Brandeis University for this year uh, in conjunction with the Organizational Sustainability course. Um, and that will be with students from Brandeis University. And um, we hope to see actually these students join us here next year um, in, a, in a collaboration. Um, so these are a lot of the things that uh, we're developing and, and, and a lot of the opportunities and networking opportunities that we have together with the Veggie Center are, um, you know, they vary from year to year, uh, and we we really enjoy and engaging our students in these. And ultimately, I mean, when you're doing your MBA, you're really widening your network. So, I mean, uh, you may recognize some faces here, you may not. Um, our students uh, and graduate and alumni who are, um, you know, logged on, they definitely uh, definitely recognize some faces here. Um, and when you're, you know, your, your, your network is going to be widened, you're connecting to our faculty of business and management, um, the faculty of business and management, uh, researchers, our own adjunct faculty, um, our visiting professors, um, alumni, our growing alumni network as we enter our fifth cohort, um, you know, the, your diverse uh, class, and uh, of course, you know, once you participate in the internship, uh, you know, that opens a whole new portal uh, for our students as well. Finally, just to touch on COVID, um, you know, March 15th, we kind of all had to uh, enter the virtual classroom. And uh, what we saw was our program and faculty really adapting, thriving. Um, we know it's not ideal. Uh, we all really want to return to the classroom. Uh, but we've really discovered that our faculty have been able to um, to uh, employ novel modes of teaching uh, and really develop and evolve uh, in that realm. Um, we really do hope that classes are going to be held on campus and we're really hopeful, more than crossing our fingers as we see that, um, uh, that uh, you know, uh, vaccination has really engendered a lot of hope. Um, so, so we're crossing fingers on both hands. Um, and actually this year we really hope to see in the next coming months that our, our students return 
uh, to frontal teaching. Uh, what we do know is that uh, teaching could, you know, the, the academic experience may look a little bit different, we're not sure, but we know that we're prepared uh, for any scenario, one of which is uh, what's called a hybrid teaching model. So ultimately, uh, the university is, um, uh, is, is really prepared, uh, prepared to go with this. It's uh, basically classrooms that are set up uh, to allow the, te the professor to teach face-to-face -face, uh, with a limited number of students in the classroom, uh, and then uh, the rest of the students uh, for connecting synchronously via Zoom. Um, so this is an arrangement that we know accommodates any, um, you know, the rapidly changing policies regarding COVID. Um, and, but we do hope that next year, you know, we'll be as much face-to-face uh, -face as possible. Um, and ultimately the decisions, you know, they don't come from us, they come from, uh, you know, uh, the Ministry of Health, the Council of Higher Education uh, in Israel, and obviously uh, BGU uh, upper administration. And, and finally, uh, I guess quite importantly, um, a little bit about our admissions uh, process. Um, we welcome admissions from all over the world. Um, our admissions uh, requirements are an undergraduate degree uh, from an accredited institution. We look for high academic achievement in our students, um, which means that as converted to the Israeli scale, an 82 minimum average um, in your undergraduate degree or uh, an 80 if you studied uh, engineering, economics, mathematics, computer science, um, in our, for our international students, we uh, require a GMAT or a GRE um, uh, with uh, threshold scores of 580 total in the GMAT with a 40 quantitative or, or in the GRE, uh, the equivalent approximately of 160 uh, in quantitative and the verbal sections. Um, and if you did not study uh, your undergraduate degree in English or you, and you're not an, uh, a native speaker of English, then we do require um, a proficiency test in English, that could be the TOEFL or the ILTS. Uh, and ultimately we're looking for our diverse students. So we're looking for, uh, we're looking for professional experience or international experience. Um, uh, most importantly, uh, our, these admission requirements, uh, the most important factor I would like to say is that we are looking holistically. So these are, you know, these are our requirements, but we welcome all applications. Um, all of our, all of our applicants are really, uh, uh, reviewed on an individual basis and uh, evaluated by our admissions uh, committee. The way you apply to our program is twofold. Um, the initial phase is actually an eligibility evaluation uh, to the program itself. So that's not applying directly to BGU. You are submitting an eligibility uh, uh, application directly to the program. That's an online form that's available um, through our website. Uh, you're submitting your supporting documentation, that would be your CV, your diplomas, um, uh, your GMAT, if relevant, TOEFL, um, and we do request a statement of purpose, and all documentation has to be in English unless um, you have, uh, unless you're, you studied in Israel and it's in Hebrew. Uh, your diplomas and your transcripts, CVs must be in English. Um, and then uh, if requested, you're invited to an interview, uh, and if you're deemed eligible, comes phase two, where we redirect you to BGU uh, admissions and you submit the official BGU application form. Um, and uh, the registration fee, and then ultimately once admitted, uh, paying the first semester tuition deposit. And then at that point, if you're an international student requiring support from um, the Office of International Academic Affairs, uh, that's where uh, that next phase comes into play for visas and uh, dorms and anything else that's, that's relevant for you. Um, that's it. So that was kind of my spiel. And I'd really like to now move on to our, uh, to, uh, to our uh, uh, current student, Lydia, and to our alumni, alumnus, Michael, uh, Michael. And so I'm not sure which one is gonna start. I guess Lydia. I can go first. <laughs> go for it, so. Uh... All right. Hi everyone, <laughs> I am part of the current International Business MBA program uh, here at, at Ben Gurion University. I am originally from Michigan. And I came over in September. I moved here, uh, lived through the quarantine <laughs> and, and all of that. And it's been going really, really good. Uh, the classes themselves, they're in Zoom format right now, but they've been super interactive. Our class size is about, is about I think, 26 or 27. And so we've actually really gotten to know each other on Zoom and WhatsApp uh, groups. And then also there's people here in Beersheba that are attending the program as well. So we'll get together and attend some of the classes together at somebody's apartment or house, all within the regulations, of course. Uh, but we'll attend the classes together. So it's been going really, really good. Um, 
I don't know if anybody has questions or if I should just kind of talk about some of the highlights so far. Uh, but the university itself is very diverse. It's very international, which I absolutely love. Actually, our program is about half Israelis and half internationals, which has been awesome because having the local influence as well has been really good from Tel Aviv, Jerusalem and other cities um, as well. And then the the collaboration that we have within our group projects and presentations and um, the different type of yeah just different group projects that we have and assignments have been really great too because we get to know each other and have to work on it like we often have to do in real life in professional settings right you have to work with team members you have to work and create content and then present so it's very very useful and practical uh, but at the same time it kind of stretches us and pushes us to think in, in different ways so that's been good as well any questions or <laughs> I feel like I'm just kind of talking about, uh, yeah, I don't know my experience so far, but do you, does anybody have questions that I can answer? No, oh, no. Okay. <laughs> it's a quiet, quiet. Um, one of the, one of the things I want to mention actually about BGU and why I picked this program. So I visited uh, Beersheba for the first time a year ago at a cybersecurity conference that they hosted, the, the university hosted. And my field is cybersecurity and business. And of course, Israel is known for its leading technology and cybersecurity, innovation and different way of thinking and solving problems. And uh, Beersheba itself is actually starting to become a center of of innovation and latest technologies in cybersecurity. So they have a high tech park and they have great collaboration with the university. That's one of the reasons I really chose this program and chose to be here because I want to be on the leading edge of what's being developed. Um, the university itself has a great cybersecurity, computer science, computer engineering, and you know different um, different things that they're doing here. So I thought it's a, such a great way to combine business and that, um, but also just be in the ecosystem, you know, uh, connect with different companies and see what they're doing and absorb what they're, yeah, what they're doing here and develop my career further. So it's a little bit about me. Thank you. Thank you very much. And now I know that you're in between meetings also, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm still covering US time. So I get to have meetings today at 10 and 11 p.m. here because it's the afternoon there, but it's all good. <laughs> good, well, thank you for joining us. No problem. Um, I guess, Michael, would you, there you are. Yes. Hi, Maya. Hi, everyone. So my name is Michael, as Maya said. Um, I'm a corporate development manager and chief of staff for uh, Corny Digital. Uh, Corny Digital is a leading, uh, is a global leader in uh, digital textile printing. Uh, headquarters based in Israel. Very interesting company. Um, my role there is, uh, among others, uh, has to do with the corporate strategy, m and investor relations, things like that. And um, about two years ago, my wife, Shir, and myself, we were looking for, we were thinking about going abroad and starting our MBA somewhere uh, in Europe or in, uh, uh, in the States. But uh, she actually manages her family-owned uh, account, accounting firm. And so we took the decision of uh, staying in Israel and decided to study here. And we were looking for uh, a similar experience and doing some kind of uh, international program here in Israel, uh, studying in English and with uh, students from uh, uh, different countries, having the closest ex experience as possible to learning somewhere abroad. And so we decided both to join the uh, IMBA uh, in uh, BGU, and we uh, we actually did the entire I don't know we, we did four semesters actually, but we did everything together, which is a great experience. Um, and we were also looking uh, at first when we heard that it's in BGU, it was some it's about two hours uh, away from Tel Aviv where we used to live, but. Since we've already uh, were thinking about going abroad, what's two more hours uh, by train, right? So we decided uh, to enroll, and uh, Bereshit was actually a very good uh, experience for us. A bit different uh, after spending ten years in Tel Aviv. Uh, spending some time in Bereshit was really uh, refreshing, I would say. Uh, so I'm the 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 course the the. 
Then Bien, did you really tick a lot of boxes when you were looking for somewhere to study? We were looking for the uh, diverse group of people. We were looking for, to study in English uh, in, a in a good university in Israel, somewhere which is not in Tel Aviv or in the center. So it ticked many boxes. I think that throughout our studies, um, we got to see how the academy, because we both come from a very rich business background, we both got to see how the, um, uh, by the way, we met at EY when she was doing her uh, uh, I don't know, accounting, uh, she was an intern and I was doing uh, management consulting. Um, so we both come from a business background and it was quite a pleasure to see how the academy meets real life uh, practices and I think that uh, the courses really provided us with an additional uh, uh, deeper layer of understanding certain situations that we've met in our day-to-day uh, -day. and um, if I had to give one tip to uh, people who are deciding whether they should enroll or, or not is try to study with your spouse but if you do find someone who completes you. She, uh, she is really good with numbers. So all the accounting courses were really good for us. And the, the uh, more uh, soft business courses, things like strategy and uh, organizational courses, uh, those are things that I could help her with. Uh, that's it. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer. Uh, hello, sir. Uh, this is uh, Sudinda Fatnes. Hi, Sudhan. Nice to meet you. Sudhir. Uh, Sudhindra, sir. Sudhindra Fadnis. I'm from India, sir. Sorry, again, can you can you repeat the question? Uh, well, uh, I'm Sudhindra Fadnis. I'm from India. Yeah, hi. Yeah, so I just wanted to know whether uh, I am a 34 year old technical writer, but I'm very much fascinated by Israel because it is the startup nation of the world. It is known for its innovation and technology. So do you think it would be a good idea for me to pursue MBA in Israel, sir? Especially Ben Gurion University. Please see your comments, please. So I think, uh, um, I think Israel is a very good uh, uh, place to, to get to, uh, you know, uh, get into the technological or in the business world. I think, I think Israel is a very, many companies in Israel are, uh, are a very good combination between the business and the technical uh, worlds. I think mm -hmm. many people have, have competencies in both. And this is what, this is what usually makes them a v a very good st um, managers and uh, CEOs of companies. The many, many startups, many public companies. Uh, mm -hmm. This combination is very unique in Israel, and I think in BGU you can find this combination uh, in I, I, not only in BGU. I think in the IMBA you can find this combination really strong because most of the people that we've learned with, we've studied with, mm -hmm. were engineers coming from a very rich and strong technological background. And I think that some of us, some of the students, and and obviously all uh, all the professors and teachers provided with a very very strong business background and the uh, mm -hmm. uh, managerial accounting best, uh, background. And this unique combination uh, gives a lot of benefit and will push people ahead in their careers, at least in my humble opinion. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Sure, thank you. Any other questions? Great. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Michael. Sure. Um, so I guess really we've Maya, really there is a few questions oh, in the a, chat. In the so chat. if you can, yeah, oh, okay, you can yeah. open and see what would you like okay. to answer. Um, okay, so okay, okay. So uh, I'll address. I guess I'll just kind of start from from the top. Um, and uh, I'll address the question regarding the internship program. Um, the, uh, there was a question on how uh, does it work in, in terms of finding an internship um, and how do you get a chance to meet with the HR recruiters? So the internship program is all facilitated through the Benji Center um, and it's the Benji Center that recruits the startups for the internship program. Uh, and once they're recruited, then the matching process uh, takes place. So that means uh, that you are able to choose from a pool of, of, uh, of uh, startups. Uh, Lydia, actually, I think, I think she just went through this process. Uh, I, I think she was participating as well. 
uh, if you want to patch in on that also, maybe from your experience just this year. Yeah, it was really, really great. We had actually about five or six hour workshop with the center itself. So they walked us through different aspects of the startup, the um, the innovation business cycle, uh, where different where different companies may be, and then also they highlighted to us different types of startups that they're working with, and we do a one on one matching. So it's really great. They look at my background and what the startup may need, and then set up interviews. And you may have two or three interviews. That way, you can kind of pick what interests you, and then you can also see if you connect with the person, if there's synergy, etc. So it's a, a great process. And you've just matched? You've, you've started, have you started your process? I haven't, your I haven't matched yet. <laughs> <laughs> You're still in the process. So that's, the part process. Of the, that's part of the dynamic nature of, the, of this internship program yeah. is that we don't give up. And if there's not a match, uh, you know, we continue to work together with the student uh, yeah. to find something that works. So thanks, Lydia. Um, uh, there was a question regarding uh, the exchange program. So I, um, uh, okay, and I see that Karine actually answered regarding the exchange, right? So the exchange is through the office of the, the office of international academic affairs, um, and so all all the details are sort of uh, uh, that's all facilitated through them. Of course, it has to be in coordination uh, with the program as well. Um, does the tuition include traveling? Um, does the tuition include traveling fee or a student dorm? Is it a paid internship, and does the course provide co-op? Okay, so the tuition does, is strictly tuition. It covers your, uh, the program uh, uh, per se. It does not include um, anything in addition. It doesn't include dorms. Uh, the paid internship is not paid, um, nor are you actually paying for it. It's just a, um, sort of an extra opportunity to participate. We encourage all of our students to participate in the, in the internship program. Um, but no, it is not a paid internship. Um, could you please write, oh, the course hours to sort of, to just, somebody was asking uh, if we can just uh, uh, repeat the course hours. Courses, classes are held Thursdays and Fridays from, and on Fridays from eight o'clock in the morning until two o'clock in the afternoon. On Thursdays, classes are held from two o'clock until, uh, in the afternoon until eight o'clock. Uh, students who are required to take uh, the prerequisite courses because they don't qualify for exemptions um, in the first and second semesters start classes uh, at 11 o'clock on Thursdays. So that's from 11 until 2. So they'll be in class from 11 until 8 o'clock. Uh, in addition, if students don't qualify for an economics uh, prerequisite exemption, uh, then they will be taking that course as an intensive course uh, for about two weeks prior to the start of the first semester. Um, all these dates actually are available um, in our information booklet. Uh, they're all delineated, and, and I'll, of course, be more than glad to, to clarify anything uh, that's, uh, that's unclear. Uh, and it, um, anybody, the program is open to all applicants from, from, you know, from any country that, uh, you know, from any country that's obviously permitted uh, that we have uh, diplomatic relations. Um, and, um, to work in Israel for a few years. Um, so uh, as far as uh, like work opportunities following the program, um, your student visa only allows you to study in Israel. Students, you know, who are here on a student visa and, you know, um, uh, have a goal of, of sort of pursuing uh, work here, that's um, on a completely different visa. That's a completely different process that you sort of do individually as you find a, a company that works for you. And, um, uh, you know, on a completely, a completely different visa process. Um, so not on your student visa. No, you're not allowed to stay here on a student visa uh, for work. Um, find the skill of starting the program. Uh, there, I'm sorry, there was a question uh, uh, regarding law studies that I'll be more than glad to answer just maybe on an individual basis because I didn't quite understand the question. And, uh, and uh, I'll just repeat that there were no specializations in the MBA. So there's no specializations, no thesis, uh, just a generalist MBA uh, with a fixed curriculum. So I think that I addressed everything. I hope I did. Um, if these are some, this is uh, the contact information, um, email, website, uh, our social media. You can find us on Facebook and you can connect us via phone or WhatsApp. Um, and that's, that's pretty much it. I'd like to thank you guys for, for joining us today. Um, please reach out with any questions. Um, and we look forward to reviewing your applications and seeing you amongst our students in the fall.